Hey, how y'all doing? It's Sharonda, and hey, how y'all doing? And today I am here to do my uh, reading wrap up for the month of April. So let's get into this thing, shall we? Okay, so um, this I'll, this is gonna be the follow up to the TBR that I did at the beginning in beginning of April, end of March. Um, and I'll link that video in the um, comments uh, in the details below. But so the first book we're gonna start off with is A Happy Marriage by Maki and Joji. This is a Magna um, volume one. Um, and for the most part, I did enjoy reading this. Um, so we have Chiwa who agrees to an arranged marriage to help out her father who always seems to be getting in some kind of goddamn trouble. He be starting up these, you know, dead end starter type things. Or, you know, he be having this, this gambling debt. He be going to the, uh, you know, the, 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 the bad people over there <laughs> and borrowing money to start up these stupid ass starter ideas. And she will always have to like bail them out. So this is just another way for her to help her father out because this time he went to the wrong damn bad people over there and he about to, you know, <clears throat> his ass, okay? So she has to uh, agree. To, she wasn't going to do it at first, but once she found out, you know, the situation with her dad, she ended up going into the arranged marriage. But anyway, she ends up going into an arranged marriage with the CEO, uh, the CEO grandson, grandson of the company that she works for. His name is Hakutu. So in this first book, we kind of like see them getting to know each other, you know, um, through some very hilarious moments. Um, you know, he, him learning a little bit about her, she, her learning a whole lot about him and, you know, just how they're going to, um, work this arranged marriage out. So the first book was real. Um, the first book was good. It was real. Like I said, it was real cute. I ended up liking it a lot. I actually downloaded a sample to the second book just to get the feel of like, you know, how the story is going to progress. And I'm going to, um, continue with this mock now because it was really, really, um, it was cute. I liked it. And I think like these two have like some really like good chemistry together, like just from reading the first and the second, um, the second volume, like they just have some really cute, um, chemistry together. And I think we're going to get like this little bit of a friction because, you know, she was very much independent, you know what I'm saying? And Hakutu, he wants somebody that is going to be like a wife you know especially for like you know he's the ceo of the company and it's just like a, you know like a traditional type wife and that's not uh chihuahua so we shall see how this volume goes i probably will because they're short you know what i mean so i'll probably end up um maybe possibly reading it by the end of this month i will hope so but yeah I like it. The next book we're going to go to is uh, My Curvy Rival by uh, Lee Caron. I won't go too much into, you know, details of this one because me and Tama actually talked about it on the podcast. So you can listen to Brazenly Shady, okay, um, and get our fuller thoughts on this book. But I will say that um, it was an okay read for me. I felt like the, okay. So I, I think the main characters had great chemistry together. Um, but I do feel like the sex scenes kind of like overread the actual relationship that we as readers were supposed to be getting on page. Um, and just give you like just a, a, a feel of what this book is. So we have Leo and um, Jazz. J both of them are gym owners. Leo's kind of like, you know, kind of like the kind of like drill sergeant workout type uh, gym owner. And here comes Jazz with her pink soft, you know, kind of like fun at the gym um, kind of, uh, you know, gym owner. And what ends up happening is Jazz ended up putting like the flyers for her gym because it was new. She started like leaving these flyers all over Leo's gym property. And, you know, he has an issue with that. 
and they kind of start off at like the back you know at like this this kind of like this kind of like weird meetup or whatever where leo goes to her gym to do you know pretty much ask her like why the hell are your flyers popping up all over my shit like what's going on and we kind of find out the situation why whatever but you know even though it says my curvy rival a spicy novella as you can see from the cover i just feel like the spiciness the sex, not even the spiciness, just the sex scenes just overread what was supposed to be happening with this couple. We ended up not getting, in my opinion, not getting enough of them on page. I, like with these novellas and these novelette books that a lot of folks are putting out, I just feel like we're not getting like a building or a, a proper development of a relationship between a couple. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, readers want shorter pages, but still give us some type of development of a relationship between a couple and what's supposed to be going on between them because it, that's not what we're getting a lot of the times. Um, we're getting a whole lot of sexual scenes in... For why? Because honestly, we can get one or two sex scenes, good sex scenes, and that can balance out the actual romance. You know what I mean? And there's no romance on page because then we have a situation with this tension between Leo and his brother. And then Jasmine was playing headspace games between Leo and his brother, which really pissed me off during the read because I was like, girl, you are too motherf old to be talking about someone. Like, I don't think he feels that way. Bitch, he did. He did. You was wild and Jazz was wilding in his book. And I was like, girl, you was getting on my nerve. So pretty much bottom line is there was not enough of them on page. And Jazz was playing headspace games and I ain't like that. So I ended up rating that one 2.5 because I was just like, what's going on here? What is going on here? Okay. <sighs> Next book is going to be Lady Venom Takes a Mistress by Cat Blackthorn. I ended up liking this book very, very much. It is a sapphic uh, fantasy romance. No, I'm sorry, it's a sapphic gothic romance where you have like um, the main character, she ends up posy every year, this little small town that they are in, they have kind of like this, this auction. Like that's exactly what it is. They have this auction where young girls are like pretty much sold off to the highest bidder or whatever these men can be like just they can be as young as young and they can be as old as old and these women are pretty much put up on these auction uh type blocks or whatever and sold off um and what ends up happening posy every every year comes up with some damn idea to get herself you know kicked off she's like wearing terrible clothes teeth not brushed stank breath you know <laughs> all these type things so that she would not get um picked or chosen and her mother is just over the motherfucking games but it's nothing that her mother can do um because posey was not having it but this year she comes across this gentleman that just did not care he he was just like i don't care but you do you can you can have stank breath you can have a stank you can do whatever honey i'm gonna get you and he ended up getting her um but the night of their marriage or whatever posey ended up running up in these woods and nobody goes inside of these woods because of lady venom she's like queen of snakes all these other things or whatever and um she runs lady the men that worked for her future husband ended up chasing her into the woods but they're all either like chased off or killed off because lady venom ended up saving posy that night and this is how posy becomes her mistress posy thought okay thank you for saving me now can i leave and lady venom was like nope you're gonna stay here forever so what generally what happens is like this relationship builds between them um she actually ends up uh falling for lady venom or whatever but it's kind of like this backstory as to why lady venom is lady venom how she became to be in this forest surrounded by these dark woods and snakes and and things like that and it's also kind of like this story of where like it's kind of like 
minor story underneath all of that where um there's this kind of like little friction or war going on between the snakes and the birds that live you know in this forest surrounding her or whatever so I ended up liking this story. I saw it, uh, Posey and Lady Venom had like great chemistry together, very sensual romantic scenes between them. And we kind of see kind of like where Posey just like, there's really no resistance from her when she goes into Lady Venom's house. Like she initially is trying to like, okay, well maybe I'll stay like a night or two and trying to like find my way up out of this, you know, out of this spot. But what ends up happening once she gets inside of this house and she sees, you know, the relationship that Lady Venom has with the ghost, because also this house attracts ghosts or whatever. And basically it's like, kind of like a protection type thing for them. So these ghosts go there after their afterlives and they end up working, pretty much working for Lady Venom or whatever. So you see Posey not just building a relationship with Lady Venom, but the ghost, you know, the, the ghost in the house as well. It was really just like a really um, well done story, like the building of everything, even like I said, the little minor story of the war between the snakes and the birds and how all of that tied in at like the end because by the end of the book we kind of find out like why this auction was being held every year um and it is tied to lady venom and also why she's kind of like stuck in this house and, and like why this war between these birds and these snakes are going on so it was a really good story I ended up rating this one uh, four stars because it's just really, really good. Like I love the world building, like the world building and like gothic and fantasy type stories. Like if it's not on point, if it's not like keyed into like what these characters, what's going on with these characters and things like that, I'm out of it. But I think Cat Blackthorn did a very good job with this particular story. It was really, really good. I just enjoyed the relationship between um, Venom and uh, Posey. Like, it was just really, really cute. They were just like, you know, Posey's just like kind of like fair with this red hair. And then you have like this paleness of Lady Venom with the long black hair and like the, excuse me, like the, you know, the mistress type clothes and things like that. Like, just, it was just a really well done story. From like telling it to displaying the characters on page. Very good job, job Cat Black someone. Very good job. I, I gotta say, I enjoyed this. Um, what Fire Brings by Rachel Housel Hall. This is a, I guess you wanna say like thriller mystery. Um, and it's good. I actually ended up uh, liking the, this book. Um, she's kind of like a hit or miss with me, but I ended up liking this book out of a lot of the books that I have read by her. And basically, you have this story where this writer, um, well, this undercover, um, I guess I want to say private and get investigator who goes undercover as a writer at kind of like this writing retreat um, to find her friend. Her friend has been missing. And at the investigation company, her and the, and the other lady there, they're just like, we got to go in and try to find out what happened to, you know, what happened to the other person at this company. So, um, we have that and it's kind of like this under, 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 um, under story of like, uh, the, the young lady that is actually Bailey, who is actually, um, doing the other kind of a job also has like ties to the person that they are investigating. Um, he's kind of like this, uh, well-known Arthur who, um, who we kind of find out is just, that man was fucking terrible. Like he was terrible. By the time I got to the end of the book, I was like, God damn, like he's crazy. Like just fucking crazy. Um, but it was a really good story. I like kind of like the the building of this thriller, right? And like Bailey trying to figure out where Sam is. Sam is the missing uh, young lady. Um, and also kind of like investigating this man too and, and why all these strange things 
keep happening to the people around him, especially when they get close to him or whatever. Um, and kind of like the house that he was doing these writer retreats in, kind of like, like kind of like the people that worked for him, like some of the people that worked for him who were in it uh, were in on uh, what he was doing or whatever. But child, when I found out, small spoil. When I found out that this man was pretending to be his own son, that shit blew my brain backwards. I was like, what? <laughs> because that takes commitment, honey. That takes commitment to pretend to be your own child that you murdered. Like, <laughs> what? Like, just crazy and It was a really, really good book. I, I uh, this what I forgot to say. I'm sorry. This is an AR. <laughs> this is an AR uh, ARC that I received um, directly through the publisher. This was a good ass book. Like I was just like, oh my god! Just like the twists and turns, and, and and her writing is. Let me tell you something. Miss House of Hall can write. She can write. She can weave a story. She can tell a goddamn story. And you're really kind of like just left on edge. Um, you know, as you're reading, you know. Um, I did end up rating it a three. I do feel like, even though this story was really good, I do feel like the pacing was very like off. Um, there were just a lot of times where I ended up putting the book down, didn't pick it up for, you know, like a day or two or whatever. It takes you a while to get into it because she does do a lot of, you know, building to what is going on with um, Bailey throughout this story. But, you know, the pacing just kind of like took me out of it. But for the most part, I really did like this book. It was, it was good. I ain't even gonna lie. It, it, it was really, really good. So uh, the next book is Overtake by Lucille Lillian. <coughs> Excuse me. This is another book that Tame and I read for the podcast. Um, Again, <laughs> you can go check, check out um, Brazenly Shady. Okay. And for the most part, I like the book. So basically, this book has a Formula One driver. Um, and what what was she? Oh my God, Jesus Christ! She was a she was a nutritionist or a chef or whatever for this company. And she's uh, going on vacation. Myra, I'm sorry, I didn't even say the names. The My Myra is the name of the character, female character, and Calvin is the name of the male. Uh, character. But anyway, Myra is going on. A, uh, her best friend is treating her uh, on a trip for her birthday or whatever to the Maldives or whatever. And uh, she finds out like soon as they land, she finds out that she has been laid off or whatever. So she's just like, you know, in this mood or whatever. But what ends up happening is she runs into Calvin uh, one day while she's out on the beach and they kind of like uh, have this instant attraction to each other and the fake dating comes in or the fake yeah the fake dating comes in because Calvin is having kind of like this tussle child he's tussling with the um with the uh with the paparazzi okay they won't stay off his back they're starting all these rumors about these relation these relationships that he is having or whatever and you know it's, it's, it's a lot of back and forth with uh, Calvin and the paparazzi or whatever. And he ends up asking, asking Myra to be his fake girlfriend to get the paparazzi off of his back. Um, so that is like the gist of the story. So basically, again, I'm not going to go into too much detail because like I said, again, me and Tama talked about the book in detail on the podcast. Um, but for the most part, we pretty much felt the same way about this book. Uh, there was chemistry between Myra and uh, Calvin, um, but again, lacking of uh, a built-up relationship between them. We didn't really 
like especially with this book we did not get enough of the couple on page it was kind of like be my fake girlfriend and then boom there's you know there's a happily ever after which you know we don't mind it's a romance that's why we're here right but um yeah no relationship building at all um there was a lot of uh outside stories that was that was kind of like being told that kind of like overtook that but mainly there was no building of a relationship in my opinion between calvin and myra um and we picked the book up because it was a story between uh like i said a formula one driver and this and this young lady but he was a black formula one driver I, we did feel like she did a very good job of describing like formula one racing and all that other stuff but again listen to the podcast okay next book is uh the spell shop by sarah beth durst this is another book that I received uh, as an ARC through a publisher. I think it was. You know what? Let me not guess. Because I, <laughs> I ended up um, rating this one a four star. This is a fantasy uh, romance. And it's, when I, I was interested in it because when I saw the details of it, it was like it's a cottage, kind of like cottage core fantasy. And I was like, Y'all put cottage corn in front of everything now. <laughs> but anyway, for the most part, I really did enjoy this book. So basically, we have um, this young lady. Um, it's set like in an alternative kind of like uh, world or whatever. And we have Kayla, who is this librarian in like this kingdom or whatever. And when we go inside the first of the book, we see that the kingdom is being attacked by this resistance army who is tired of them pretty much depleting the, the resources surrounding them. So while this kingdom is here flourishing, this king or whatever is here flourishing or whatever, and, and the kingdom is flourishing, they are literally draining the resources from the little towns around them. Even the town that Kay Kayla was born in, but her parents left when she was very small. And she, um, when this resistance comes in and pretty much burns the shit down, cause they like, we sick. We is sick of y'all mess. Y'all taking from everybody. Y'all not sharing the resources. Very much tied into what's going on now. But anyway, okay. So Kayla ends up escaping on this boat or whatever and she ends up traveling back to the small town the small little yes yeah, small town that she was born in she escapes with this this spider plant that is kind of like um i don't know it was it was like a plant that was kind of like like her little companion or whatever it, it was i i can't describe how what how Kaz actually looked but he was kind of like this plant or whatever and he was made with magic but it, it was just really really cute like uh, Kaz was like the best part of, one of the best parts of this book sorry one of the best parts of this book I just loved his personality um and just like how he was just like he was kind of like just like you know when times when Kayla was doing too much he was like girl you was doing way too much like I loved him but Anyway, she ends up escaping to this town that she grew up with. And she actually goes back and she sees that her childhood home, it has been, uh, it's still abandoned. It's, well, yeah, it's still abandoned. And she takes up resident, residence there. But she ends up uh, running into um, her neighbor um, who uh that's just kind of like uh has been kind of like trying to keep up the house as well or whatever but he kind of like runs this uh mer it's kind of like this mer horse farm or whatever but when he first met uh kayla 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 is kind of like a very introverted character even when she worked at the library she kind of like stayed to herself uh she never went home like she literally like the, the library was a goddamn life so, you know, going back to the small town and getting to like know like her neighbor who becomes her love interest in this story um, and the townspeople and all of these things. I'm looking down because I'm trying to get his damn name. I need to start writing these damn characters name down because well, I don't never remember their names. Why? I, I, 
Anyway, so anyway, so her just trying to like get, get to know her neighbor and these townspeople, it's hard for her because she's just so used to being by her goddamn self. And that's totally a her decision. But anyway, when she first met her neighbor, she was rude as hell. I was like, Kayla, you ain't even gotta be that goddamn rude. Like he was bringing her like food, you know, trying to like clear the path for her to walk and stuff like that. I was like, girl, you is rude. But we do see um, like kind of like this really beautiful romance that develops between uh, between them as Kayla, you know, starts to step out more especially the first time she the first time she went to town and she met all the different um people and beings that were there one thing another thing that i loved about this book were the description of the characters like we had all types of characters in within this town like everybody lived together you know what i mean got along things like that it was just a really well done story world building was awesome pacing was awesome Everything was good about this book. I ended up rating it four stars. The Spell Shop by Sarah Beth Durst. Really, really good. Kayla, Kayla was being a little bit too much sometimes. She really, really was. Because I was like, trust me, I understand being an introvert, introvert. But girl, but girl, loosen the hell up. Because what is this, huh? What is this? I was like, girl, you was doing way too much. <laughs> but I really, really did enjoy this. Next book is going to be one more valentine by katrina jackson this is the second book in her love at last series oh my god i love this book it was so good i just and just, it's just i can't even talk um just getting um just seeing candace and ezra again they were the couple from the first book it was just it was just nostalgia but anyway <laughs> in this book we have may and uh miles who are currently divorced and how they are struggling they are struggling like motherfuckers okay they they just can't get it together they missing each other but they have not talked they have been divorced for like three years they have not talked but what ends up happening is they end up going uh seeing each other again being in each other's atmosphere or whatever because candace and ezra um are celebrating their asses finally getting back together and uh they're invited to come to paris to celebrate candace and ezra as well but candace and ezra kind of like had a plan too by inviting miles and may to uh come celebrate them um you know in paris but uh it's, it's, it's it all tied in you know what i'm saying but it was a really cute story i loved it um the the main thing that i really really like loved about it was the mentions of uh mouse diary uh journal entries which was great um i'm not gonna go into this one as well because i do have a video here on my channel giving my full complete thoughts about this book so watch that video i will also link it in the description but oh my god this book was so 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 good so good i love katrina jackson oh my god she just she just be writing child she just be writing her little ass off and i love it i love it i ain't even mad at it okay and the last book that i read incomplete and completed sorry for in the month of april was love from scratch by nina high um, this is another book that Tamer and I uh, discussed on the podcast. You gonna have to go listen, okay? I'm a, I'm a link all the for each book that we discussed on the podcast. I'll link the episodes uh, in the description box. But honey, this was oh, I ended up reading Katrina's book. I'm sorry, four stars. Um, <laughs> okay, so this one. <laughs> me and Tamo, boy, I tell you, woo. Um, <laughs> it was okay. So basically, in this book, we have a uh, a chef who is struggling to Amaya, Chef Amaya, who is struggling to keep her restaurant afloat. Um, she is trying to get a viral moment on TikTok with kind of like this Keith Lee type impersonator, not impersonator, but this Keith Keith Lee type. Uh, uh, critic, a uh, food critic or whatever to come to her restaurant and kind of like get her restaurant to take off. So 
you know, that's while that is happening, in comes um, Draymond, who is a Martin. Uh, this is a series, the Martin Brothers series, um, and they are billionaires, okay? And Draymond uh, comes into her restaurant. He has seen her on TikTok every now and again as well, but he does go inside her restaurant, loves the food, and we see kind of like this development of a relationship between uh Draymond and Amaya. This is really uh I thought it was a really cute read. Um it has uh pretty much no drama between Draymond and Amaya or whatever. It's kind of like a non-conflict kind of like love story. We do have it where Amaya there is the no communi not miscommunication, honey, the no communication trope going on up in here because there was a lot of things going on with Amaya that she just would not discuss with Draymond and I was just like girl just tell the man like you're dating a billionaire child let me tell you something ask for the goddamn money if you're giving up the goodies ask for the goddamn money okay because he a billionaire he a whole ass billionaire why are we not asking these billionaires for money when we giving them the goods like what what mm -mm. but for the most part i did like this book i love the chemistry between amaya and uh draymond they had great chemistry together we do kind of like have a side story where there's tension between amaya and her sister um amaya just feels like her sister rags on her too much about um you know about her in this restaurant owning this restaurant and kind of like um you know just being down on her about owning a restaurant but you know like once i sat down and thought about the book my sister basically just wanted amaya to find somebody that's gonna love her and take care of her well she ain't gotta work like she don't work or whatever but that wasn't amaya amaya didn't want that life like yeah she wanted somebody to love and take care of whatever but she also wanted to work or whatever so you know it was kind of like this tension between the sisters but um, but like I said, by the time I got to the end of the book and like I thought about it, because the sister was kind of like annoying, like she was doing it in a in the most annoying way. Uh, as far as like Draymond's family or whatever, just great. I love the relationship between him and his brother. Seems like he has a great relationship with his parents and stuff like that. He was just really just like a really caring guy. Like he was very concerned for Amaya and her business, like to the point where he wanted her business to take off. But for the most part, I really did like this book. I ended up rating it a three stars three stars because again there was a lot of things in my opinion that were kind of like left off page that we needed to see as readers um in the pacing again the pacing okay so let's discuss my uh dnfs it was only two but i did have some all right so first book is going to be uh madam president by desiree francis um yeah, about 20% I cut this book off. I I may pick it up again sometime in the future. Um, but basically, we have this young woman who, with the help of her cousins, um, become the first black female president um, of these here, the United States, okay? Um, basically, like I said, in the beginning of the book, just too much wordiness. We just needed to cut through all the wordiness that was in the beginning of this book and just in like like you know let's get going let's let's get this story to take off and i understand that she was describing how the main character um anita became you know how she became who she is now so but yeah um it was just too goddamn wordy so on to the second one all right so the second book that i did not finish was How to Fix a Broken Heart by Bambo Dean. Uh, this book, I maybe stopped at like 35, 40%. And it was just, yeah, I, I just struggled reading this one. And uh, Full Transparency, this is another book that I received directly from the publisher. I got this book like last year. I received it last year from them. It was, it, it was released, uh, I think like towards the end of last year or whatever. But, um, yeah and i tried to pick it up several times you know put it down pick it back up um several times since i i've gotten a book from them and i just can't get into this book i just it, it, it just was not working so i don't think i'm gonna uh you know i don't think i'm gonna try again um it's just it's just gonna have to be that it's just it's 
it's done. But um, anyway, um, we have this um, couple that meets at a wedding, Dawn and Red, um, and they pretty much have a one night stand. But you know, it's all, and they're trying to like get this relationship going or whatever. But it's like all this, all this stuff going on. I love reading African romances because it's, it's pretty much like reading Nollywood dramas, girl. It's always some shit going on. <laughs> But I don't know. I just could not get into this particular story. Um, there was chemistry, like, you know, chemistry between Red and Dawn. But, yeah, I, I just, just like the story itself, the pacing is just like, oh, my God. This is another one that, where the pacing was just like, girl, what is going on here? Um, but, yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, those are my books, Red and Not Red. Uh, for the month of April um, and until the next one later days bye